everybody. Welcome to this edition of Believing for Beyond. I'm Steve. I'm Denise. And we're so glad that you joined us today. And we, we pray that something will be said will be an encouragement to your heart and uh, an encouragement to your marriage. And uh, we're going to be talking about a uh, very important part of marriage today, which is a, a very strong foundation of what marriage is all about. We're going to be talking about the importance of trust in marriage. Uh, trust in God and trust in each other is the very essential foundation of a godly marriage. Yes. So uh, we, we want to make sure that we cover this subject in detail. And uh, we're going to start with some very important things. I, I, I uh, put together just a little chart that hopefully will help all of us to remember the importance of trust. And what I put together, and I, I trust you can see this okay, <laughs> Uh, T-R-U-S-T, the letters in trust, could stand for truth, re reliability, and transparency surrounding us. And uh, that's something to hold on to, something to remember. The essence of trust as it relates to marriage is truth, reliability, and transparency surrounding us. And if we build our home on be being open and honest with each other, and we're committed to being reliable and loyal, and we're willing to speak the truth in love, then we have an atmosphere for uh, a home that is free and safe and uh, just holy ground where we can be who we are by the grace of God without pretense, without trying to uh, appear to be something that we're not, without any secrets, without any fears, just an openness and an honesty with each other that cultivates an atmosphere of trust. So that's what we want to talk about today. Uh, the Word of God has a lot to say about trust. And uh, overall in the scripture, the biblical definition of, of uh, trust is to flee for protection, to confide in, and to make a refuge. In other words, a safe place, uh, to be confident and to be secure. So that means the, the home where we establish trust should be a safe place where we can always be secure, where we can all be, always be honest and open and transparent. We don't have to hide from each other. It, it's just a safe place to be who we are. And the Word of God says we are who we are by the grace of God. And the more we get away from who God says we are, the more uh, at ease we become. But uh, I believe that it is the will of God for us to have a, an open, satisfying relationship where there is a, a safety and a trust in our home as a place of refuge. Definitely. We live, <clears throat> excuse me, we live in a, a society where transparency and honesty and trust is not something that you see a lot of because most people, I think one of the main things that people fear about transparency is that if you really knew me and you really know what I struggle with, mm -hmm. then you won't love me. But marriage is the place where that we should find a safe place to be able to expose our hearts and our struggles. And also, I think of something else that we have to take in mind, there's a such thing as an unhealthy trust and a healthy trust. Mm -hmm. And as we go a little bit further, I will talk a little bit about an unhealthy trust. And an unhealthy trust comes from a place of not being confident in the God that you serve and actually not being confident in yourself. That's a good point. Uh, and I, I believe it's the will of God for all of those barriers to be broken down in marriage where we don't have to hide behind fear or doubt or, or insecurity with who we are. And so uh, we, we talk about relationships between husbands and wives, but that never can be all that it's supposed to be if we're not in a right relationship with the Lord. If we don't get our ultimate value and our worth from our relationship with God, then we can't expect somebody else to give us what only God can supply in our lives. Uh, but so I believe the will of God is for a husband and wife to validate and appreciate and, and just uh, 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 kind of uh, emphasize what we already know in the Lord. Yes. And, and then... Uh, then we're speaking, even as it relates to our marriages, we're speaking as oracles of God. Because if God sees us a certain way, then we have no right to see ourselves differently than that. 
We don't want to go against God's opinion of who we are. We don't go, want to go against God's love for us and the value that God places on our lives. And, and sometimes we can get into a, a place of distrust, first of all, when we take our eyes off of the Lord and we forget about the gift that God has placed in our lives, meaning our spouse, and we don't value them. And sometimes an unhealthy trust uh, can, can come from uh, an unhealthy self-esteem. So uh, we want to talk about the importance of trust. And again, the Bible definition of trust means to flee for protection. That means we should be able to run into each other's arms as best friends and run into each other's hearts without fear of, of being uh, torn apart or belittled or uh, valued less than what God says we are. And that, that doesn't mean we're always going to have a perfect relationship because there is no such thing as a perfect relationship. But uh, God is so gracious in his wisdom and his understanding that he can bring imperfect people together for his perfect purpose. Even though we're not perfect, we can be perfect for each other and we can value each other the way God wants us to value each other. And, and again, that value of someone else cannot be there unless we have that ultimate value that comes from the Lord only. That's right. So uh, the home should be a place where we trust in the Lord with all of our heart and we're free to trust in each other with all of our heart as well, that we can flee to that place of protection where we can come in after maybe a hard day at work and be able to relax and be open and honest and enjoy each other's presence and uh, not feel like you gotta perform for one another or act a certain way, but just be yourself. And, right. and I, I was thinking as Denise was speaking just a moment ago, a lot of times in premarital counseling, uh, we talk to people uh, about being open and honest with each other because they're just beginning their relationship. But it's not something that just starts when you're getting to know each other. It's something you continue to have to cultivate right. on and on all of your life. But one of the things that we like to emphasize with mar our couples that are planning to get married is if you can't be open and honest with each other and you feel like that there's something that if the other person knew this about you, then they wouldn't see you the same way or they wouldn't value you or they wouldn't love you the way that you want to be loved, then, and if you can't feel comfortable in exposing those, uh, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly parts of your life, then please don't get married because that's what God does. He brings two people together that are willing to see each other with, with open eyes and with open hearts and value them, even though they're, they're filled with flaws, because all of us are. There, there's none, the Bible says there's none good, no, not one. And so that puts us all on the same plane. And uh, so the key to getting along well is being willing to love a person for who they are. And that person being loved, not feeling like they have to hold anything back, but uh, can, they can trust their heart into the hands of someone else and they can hear from the other person's heart, and that other person doesn't feel uncomfortable in sharing what's in their heart. So uh, that's important to beginning a relationship and continuing a relationship is feeling like this is somebody that I can be totally myself with. I can share my past, my present, my hopes for the future, my fears, my insecurities, my failures, my weaknesses, my struggles, and all of that, and still be loved with an unconditional love. That's the way God loves us. And when God puts people together, he gives us a, a person to share our lives with that's gonna love us in that way too. But if there's anything right. less than that and you feel uncomfortable in sharing your heart with each other, then we would advise that couple to uh, really seriously consider whether they're right for each other or not. So would you like to say something? No, yeah, I don't wanna do all the talking, okay. <laughs> So uh, the, the, the home should be a safe place. That means where uh, we can be free to be the man and woman that God knows we are. And uh, that's what we want to strive for is to love each other the way God loves us. Because God, again, knows completely everything about us. Yes, he does. And he loves us anyway. And I'm so thankful for that. That's called mercy. And that's called grace. And those are some of the things that sometimes are absent from, from homes that should be filled with love, that should be filled with grace, that should be filled with mercy, that should be filled with, with acceptance and uh, value and worth 
Those are all the things that are important to God, and uh, that's what should be important in our home. So uh, again, another definition of trust is to confide in. There shouldn't be anything that we feel like we have to hold back from each other, that we can totally expose our hearts, and uh, we, we don't have to fear after exposing our hearts that our hearts are going to be trampled on. And uh, men like to appear to be macho and, and really got it all together, but a lot of times we don't have it all together. Uh, and uh, we, sometimes we fear that if we share our hearts that, that our hearts are going to be uh, stamped on or stepped on. And so we draw back sometime. And uh, usually in a relationship, the, the woman is usually more open and talkative and free, uh, and the man is more reserved. But uh, and, and st stereotypically, it is that way, but it doesn't mean it has to be that way. Uh, so I believe God wants to create an atmosphere in the home where nobody has to hold back or to feel like that there's anything that I have to hold back uh, that I can be free to share my heart, my feelings, uh, my weaknesses, my struggles. I, we can talk to each other about anything and, and still be best friends and still love each other with a, with a love that's from God. And, and that's what we right. want to strive for. And that's what we want to continue to build. Because when we do that, then we cut down on the possibility of those things ever being abused or misused or, or, uh, uh, devalued in our lives and in our relationships. One thing that I want to interject here is that when we talk about trust on this level, I want to say that it is not possible to start out with that level of trust. Trusting your spouse is, is part of growth and mm, personal yes. growth has to come first. And that's one of the things that I always like to emphasize when I'm talking to people about marriage and relationships, and, it, and it's because I have to. I've learned from my own experiences. I've learned from my own own failures. I've learned from my own successes, but I've learned more from my failures. If I've learned anything at all, is that you have. There has to be a personal growth for yourself. There has to be a personal growth with you and the Lord in order to come together in order to build upon that trust. Because if you have trust issues to begin with going into a relationship, even if that individual has done, has done nothing to, um, to break that trust. And please know that trust can be broken on all sorts of levels. That's it's right. not just That's infidelity, right. but That's there right. is all sorts of levels that trust can be broken. And if you go into a relationship with someone into a marriage and you already have trust issues, it's not just going to go away because now once we're man and wife and we're going home together and we're building this life, those issues are not just going to have to disappear. Those are some things that you have to work out between you and the Lord and for yourself personally so that you don't come and inflict them upon your partner. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, because a lot of relationships that are just getting started are doomed to fail because uh, sometimes there's a lot of baggage that is brought that's into right. another relationship that's, that's taken right. from a failed relationship or relationships that were hurtful and painful. And when you judge someone that you want to spend your, your present and your future with by who you've spent your past with, then you're already opening yourself up for trouble. Uh, and again, I, I, I guess we're talking a little bit about premarital relationships here other than just... Uh, uh, establish relationships, but again, it's so important to build a your relationship on on a strong foundation, a, a foundation of trust, without judging someone else uh, by someone else's failures. Uh, like the Apostle Paul said, "Why should I be judged by another man's servant?" In other words, we stand or we fall on our own merit, and everybody deserves the right to stand on their own two feet. And uh, husband or, or women coming into a relationship with a, uh, a man um, where they've been hurt in the past by a relationship should not put that or project that onto someone that they want to spend their life with, but give them the liberty to be who they are and to love them for who they are and not judge them by failures from other relationships or other experiences, but uh, give them the opportunity to be uh, a man that can show you that he can be trusted. And, right. and like Denise said, uh, trust is very easy to lose and it's very hard to build. And you, you just don't go into a relationship absolutely or completely or immediately trusting one another. It takes time to develop a relationship right. of trust. Yes. It takes a, 
a commitment to uh, continue to be a man and woman that can be trusted. And, uh, and again, it takes that complete openness to not hide anything from each other, uh, especially uh, when you're trying to build a relationship and then continuing that openness and honesty after you get married. Uh, because again, it goes back to uh, if you can't be completely open and honest with someone before you get married, that's not automatically going to go away no, when you get not. married. Whatever you carry into the marriage is going to be there. It, it doesn't go away when you say, I do. The only thing that happens when you say, I do, is now you're committed to make it work, and you find out a lot of things that you may not have known about each other, but now you've got to deal with those things. So it is best to deal with all of that and lay it all on the table, put all the cards on the table before you get married. So the best that you can, you know what you're getting into because nobody completely knows what they're getting into as, as well as they know each other. They don't know each other nearly as well as they will after they've been together for a long time and begin to uh, see the little idiosyncrasies of each other's uh, way of doing things and habits and uh, characteristics and things like that. So it's always good to uh, not feel like that you have to hold anything back for fear of hurting the other person. If you're going to hurt one another, it's better to hurt one another before you get married than it is to destroy each other after you get married. So uh, uh, honesty and openness will always be a good characteristic of relationships. And if you don't go into a marriage being honest and, and open and transparent, then that again is not going to automatically change once you get married. So it's good to start out with that uh, openness, that uh, sincerity, that reality, that saying what you see is what you get kind of attitude uh, without feeling like you have to put on a front or wear a mask and uh, things like that and cover things that you don't want to be exposed. Uh, in marriage, there's not anything that should be covered. There's not anything that should help be held back from one another right. because if you do, then there's always that opportunity for the devil to take secrets and dark places in our lives and use them against us to destroy our relationship. Before we move into maintaining and cultivating um, trust, one of the things that I'd, I'd like to say when I refer to unhealthy trust, I think sometimes um, we go into a relationship or we use the term knight in shining armor, especially women, you've come to rescue me. And that can, in, in, in situations, male or female, you know, a male can have the attitude that the female has come along to rescue you from your struggles, your, your problems in your life. But an unhealthy trust is to think that an individual is never going to let you down. And I think in my in my years, in my walk in this thing called marriage, I think in the, I'm going to say first 20 years, and that's a long time maybe, but I think it, it, we're all, we're, we're growing, is I had this unhealthy expectation of thinking that you will never let me down. And that's just too much to put on any person. We should never put that kind of trust. There's a healthy trust that you have in your relationship, but we should never ever put that kind of trust on another person. There is only one trust that maintains, I will not fail you, I will not let you down, and I will not hurt you, and that's your relationship with Jesus Christ. He's the only one. I'm not excusing when trust is broken, and I'm not excusing hurt. Right. I'm just talking about when trust is put in an unhealthy place and an unhealthy expectation because that way, when it's that way, I can guarantee you trust will be broken, hearts will be broken, and disappointments will come. Oh, that is that is so true. Uh, I wish I could say that I've never let my wife down or never hurt, it, hurt her uh, or wounded her or disappointed her, or failed her, or sinned against her, but all of the above. And uh, the, the sooner we realize that we are imperfect people and we take the pressure off of ourselves of being perfect, yes. then we can begin to develop the, the plan and the purpose that God brought us together yes. for to begin with. And, and part of that, that plan and purpose is to create an atmosphere in our lives where there's a just a, a simplicity, a, a love, a respect, 
and honor for each other right. that that just magnif magnifies and portrays the love that Christ has for the church and the, that the church has for him. Just a sincere relationship, a sincere uh, heartfelt love and trust that realizes that we are imperfect and we are going to let each other down That's right. and we are going to fail each other. And the sooner we realize that, the, the quicker we can really dive into a relationship that honors and glorifies God. Because like Denise said, the only one that's perfect and is never going to fail us is the one who loved us enough to that's die right. for us right. and to give his life for us. He never committed sin, but he knows how to hold us up when we do because uh, he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities and still is, thank God. So a happy marriage is one that tries to be there for each other to the best of our ability, but at the same time realizes that true happiness and true fulfillment cannot take place without leaning on the one who is perfect. And that's not me, that's not her, that's no man or woman, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ. But, but that's a good place to be because he knows more about the end from the beginning than we do. Uh, a, a commitment to each other means we start from the beginning and we trust God to carry us through all the way to the end. But the same God that brought us together is the one who sees the end from the beginning and believes in us enough to say that I, I brought you together. I, I see your failures, your weaknesses, your shortcomings. I, I sh see who you are. But in my wisdom and in my grace and in my favor over your life, I loved you enough to give you to each other, to spend the rest of your lives together because, and I'm not going to let you see the end from the beginning because I'm going to give you the grace to trust me through the beginning and go all the way to the end. And that's why uh, commitment is a commitment of faith. That, that's why uh, uh, the vows that we commit to each other is a leap of faith because we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. But when God brings you the, uh, the person that he wants to spend your life with, uh, then it's exciting knowing that we have somebody to walk out that walk of faith together. Because whether you're single or married, you're going to have to walk a walk of faith because nobody knows the end from the beginning. Nobody knows what tomorrow is going to bring. But we don't have to fear tomorrow when we trust God and we realize that God doesn't make mistakes when we believe with all of our heart that he brought us together to begin with then we can walk through life together and, and uh, know that uh, God's going to hold us up with all the mistakes that we make and all the mistakes that we are, that, that he believes in us. Right. And because of that, we can believe in each other no matter what. And so that's, that's the ultimate. And I believe that's the best that God wants us to walk in. But uh, the scripture says in Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 and 10, it says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath no, not another to help him up. Uh, and a point that I wanted to make about that verse of Scripture is that it's one thing to be alone and not have anybody there to lift you up, but it's even worse to have somebody and still feel like you're alone. Yes. Uh, so... God wants us to develop a closeness and a relationship while we're cultivating our trust in him and our trust in each other that lets us know that even though we may not always be in the same room or we may not always be in close proximity, we're never going to be far away from each other. And uh, this is a simple thing, but I thought about this uh, just a little while ago because there, there's hardly ever a day that goes by. Uh, my wife is very busy and uh, works very hard and, and is in a stressful situation a lot of times, but there's hardly ever a day that goes by that she doesn't call me just to see how I'm doing. And uh, that's a little thing, but it's a big thing because even though we're far away, we're always together. And uh, that's because we've learned through a lot of disappointing and hurting each other that we can grow to a place where our trust in the Lord and our trust in each other has become stronger than it ever was yes. before. That's right. So it's little things like that that mean something to me that even though she's going through a lot and doing a lot and involved in so much that she takes time out to think about how I'm doing. And, and that means a lot. Uh, and I feel the same way about her. Uh, even though we're not close by, uh, we're always together in our heart. And uh, that's another thing I, I talk to a lot of married couples about uh, their 
job situations where they're pulled in so many different directions because of their time requirements on their jobs, but it's not always about the, the quantity of time that you spend together, but it's about the quality, quality of time, that you're always there to encourage one another and build one another up, even if it's just for a short period of time. Those are the things that build a trust and a confidence, and those are the small things that are really the big things right. in relationship. So uh, it, it's so important to learn to have an atmosphere of trust uh, because that's how we have a right relationship with God. We trust the Lord. Trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways and he'll direct your path. So our relationship with God is based on tr trust. And we learn from the greatest example of all by learning not only to trust him, but to trust each other. So we, we really haven't gotten very far into our notes today, but uh, we'll carry this through to the end because it's such an important resource and such an important uh, attribute of a, a safe, whole, happy relationship, a relationship that's built on trust. Would you like to close us with a word of prayer, please? Father, we thank you for your goodness. And God, we thank you that you are the God that will never fail us and that we can always trust in you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, I'm asking you right now, any couple or individual that is listening that may be struggling with trust, I'm asking you to go into their heart and heal the disappointments and, and the hurts and the brokenness yes, that yes. The broken trust has caused. Lord, I'm asking you to just restore relationships. And no matter how much trust has been broken, there is nothing too hard for you to do. Yes, Lord. Thank you. God, I ask you to bless every person that is listening. I'm asking you to give joy where there is mourning. I'm asking you to give, give to supply where there's been lack and just bless every home and marriage that we come in contact to use your word to bring deliverance and healing to their lives. God, if there are single people that are listening that are just longing for that right one, God, just continue to give them the patience that they need yes. and to give them the durability and to be able to stand and wait to not make hasty decisions, to be wise and be led of the Lord and not jump into relationships that were not ordained of you. And God, we just thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time.